In this video, we'll have a look at some of my favourite features that go beyond the PL300 Power BI exam. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. So the PL300 exam gives you a good basis for Power BI, but what about if you want to go beyond that? Well, here are some favourite features that aren't included in the PL300 exam. Now, the first one is the calculation group. So suppose that you have a calculation such as year to date, previous year, that sort of thing, which you're going to have to repeat for multiple fields. So you could have a previous year of sales, a previous year of orders and that sort of thing. Well, rather than having to repeat and repeat and repeat, you can use a calculation group. Now, a lot of these features are preview that I'm about to show you. So you might have to go into file, options and settings, options, and then go down to the preview section and then enable all of these features that we're going to be talking about and then restart Power BI, close it all down, all of the windows and then reopen it. So calculation groups. So these allow you to avoid repetitive measures. So if I go into the model view, you'll see in the new model tab, which is enabled, if you enable this, you've got calculation groups. Now you can create a new calculation group by going to home, calculation group. If that isn't there, you haven't enabled the preview. And if I go into the calculation group, we've got these calculation items. And you can add a new item by clicking on calculation items and then going to new calculation item. So for example, suppose I was setting up a year to date, then I would say year to date equals calculate and in brackets or parentheses, instead of the actual measure, I would say selected measure, open brackets, close bracket. So you can do that for all of your measures. Now, in the report, I have got a slicer and that is connected to this matrix. Now, the slicer is based on the calculation group. So this enables the end user to say what they actually want to use. So I want to use the total and the year to date. So I'll click on total and hold down control and click on year to date. I can also use this in my own calculations. So here we've got a year to date calculation. And if I go to my year to date, so that is in the fact internet sales, you'll see that it says use the time intelligence group where it is year over year percentage. Now year over year percentage is quite a complicated calculation. But in my measure, I don't have to have any of that complexity. I just need to say, here is my field and I want you to use year over year percentage. Now, another feature that I quite like is field parameters. So let's say I wanted the end user not only to have the choice of how a measure is being calculated, but what the measure is. Well, I can do this by going to modeling new parameter fields. And again, if you don't have this drop down, you haven't enabled the preview feature. So this is when you can say, I want to use the following fields. Now I should point out that both calculation groups and fields parameters require explicit measures. Once you've enabled the calculation group, for example, you can't just drag say sales measure, which is a field into a visual. You actually have to create a sum of sales amount measure. So once you've selected your explicit measures, you can say, okay, these are the measures I want you to use. Let's put them into a slicer. And in fact, you can see add slicer to this page is in this dialog box. So now the end user gets to say, I want to see the sales amount or the order quantity or some other measure. And that's entirely now down to the end user. Now, another feature I quite like is dynamic string formatting. So we have got these transactions and this is just a number. However, this number has got the different currencies based on the currency. And I can do this by going to the relevant table and then going to this drop down. Again, if you don't have the drop down, you haven't enabled the preview feature and go to format. 
And here you can see the format. So I said, if the currency is United States dollars and only United States dollars, then give me it in dollars. If it's euros, give me it in euros, pounds, give it in pounds. And if it's in multiple currencies, then give me multiple. And if not, just give me the currency. So that's why we have multiple in the total and we have the Japanese yen in the currency here because I've not said what the symbol is for Japanese yen. Now, another thing that I like to do with Power BI is connect it with other apps. So, for example, we have got in external tools, we have got the DAX Studio and Tabular Editor and the ALM Toolkit. And if you don't have the external tools, then you haven't installed them yet. They are separate programs. So, if I was to click on any one of them, it would open up this external tool and I'll be able to access its tables and relationships and be able to edit a whole host of properties. I can even have my model checked for best practices so it can give me suggestions as to what I need to do. Additionally, I can also use Fabric with Power BI. So for example, suppose I create a lake house or a warehouse. So I load data into it, it gets loaded in as files and then we create tables based on it. Well, I can create semantic models based on that. And then from semantic models, so I could say I want just that one and that one, for example. So this is my summary tables. I can click confirm, it creates a semantic model. And then I can connect it up. So let's say I'm connecting it up by country, for example, so I'll click save, and then I can create a new report in the Power BI service using this fabric lake house. And I can also use pipelines and notebooks and warehouses and all the other things which are available in Power BI and the rest of fabric. So I hope you've enjoyed this video about features beyond the PL300 exam. Now, these features are also included in the DP600 exam. So, if I was just to look up DP600, and if I scroll down to the study guide and go down to the Power BI section, here you can see some of these features, such as calculation groups, dynamic strings, field parameters, and using external programs. If you'd like more information about the DP600, then please click the video on the end screen. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then why not click like? And why not click subscribe and ring that bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thanks for watching and keep learning.